Uh, we've got, uh, I don't know why, but it seems strange to be back here. I feel like we've been gone for a while, even though it was just a week. Um, so in terms of guests, we have two of our friends from the U of A Rotaract Club, Kira and Kate, the mighty duo, uh, who will do some announcements uh, shortly. We've got a uh, Rotary moment. Uh, Tamara has a video for us as part of Foundation Month. Um, I'd like to do uh, spend a few minutes to do some uh, feedback on our pool for polio. And uh, Paige, of course, is our guest speaker today. Ta-da! Uh, we'll talk about some upcoming uh, speakers and events, and then we'll close with our four-way test. So uh, to start things off, uh, Dan wanted to have a few minutes for international. Sure. Um, I have been talking to the people from Shelterbox a little bit, and they've been super helpful about uh, getting me some stuff for the Shine for Shelterbox a uh, little get together that we're planning to have on January 22nd at my house. And one of the awesome things that they sent me um, is this uh, solar light. Uh, in every shelter box, they have a pair of these solar lights. And there's a little write up here about it. Apparently, these were pitched on Shark Tank and they are amazing. Um, they uh, are inflatable, so they float. They have a little solar panel on the top, so you can charge them up that way. They have a little cord here that you can charge them, and you could also use it to charge a device, which is incredible. Uh, and it comes in a whole bunch of different colors. Like, look at. Oh. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Right? Yeah, so um, the price of one of these to donate one of these for Shelterbox is $25. So um, when you come to the party, uh, the get together, uh, we're asking for a minimum $10 donation. But if you're thinking about what could $25 buy, it could buy one of these lights for uh, a shelter box. So uh, I think these are pretty cool. Um, and I'll pass it around because I think they're fun to just sort of play with. And I also have some uh, brochures that they sent. Uh, me to um, tell you a little bit more if you're interested about the relationship between Shelterbox and Rotary and uh, how they are making a difference in places where there are disasters. So in closing, come to my party. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Okay, um, now I'm going to turn over to our friends from the U of A who have some updates for you. Hi. Um, okay, so um, coming up this week, Sorry. Um, on Thursday, one of our committees is having an open mic night. Um, it's from 6 to 9 with a donation, monetary, or feminine hygiene product for Days for Girls. And on Friday, we're having um, a blood drive for one of our other committees. If you're interested in signing up, we have spots available from 520 to 555, and you can just come let me know. And then on the weekend, we have a... Sorry. We have a... Oh, my God, I've forgotten the word. Conference. <laughs> we have a conference, and we're also... Um, going to participate in the Campus Cup, which is the university's dodgeball, big dodgeball tournament. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. So the conference is the, the, young leader, the Young Rotarian Leadership Summit, and it's put on by the district. So um, a bunch of our members and other rotor actors from all over the district are going to just do some professional development and, and have a good time, yeah. Hopefully do some networking I'm as well. And Paige is talking at it, again. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, speaking of Paige, would you like to talk about the Skill Society Stocking Stuff? So uh, every year we collect donations. Um, this year I'm taking cash donations or in-kind donations to put together stockings for uh, individuals supported by Skill Society, which is a local nonprofit that supports people with intellectual disabilities. Um, they have an outreach program. Um, a lot of the individuals that participate in that program um, have experienced homelessness in their life or um, are close to homelessness. Um, they live in poverty. And so often the, the stocking that they get from Skill Society that we provide um, is the only gift during the holiday season. So we'll be collecting donations um, and you can also give me cash donations or an e-transfer and I'll track that. We're going to get together on December 4th at um, 6 p.m. at the Skills Society Action Lab. It's a really cool space. Um, we were there two years ago to, to load the stockings. Um, it doesn't usually take too long. There's 110 stockings that we're doing all together, 55 for men, 55 for women. Um, and 
I sent out an email with the kinds of donations that we're looking for, but they're often really appreciative of like personal hygiene products, um, lotions, creams, shampoos, conditioners, socks, gloves, brushes, um, those kinds of things. Gift cards and stuff are also great, but it's a bit tricky. If we don't have 110 gift cards, then it's hard to decide who gets one. So maybe we should um, hold off on those unless people want to pool in together or something to do that. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing. And then I'm thinking I'm going to put it out there that we can gather for drinks at a pub nearby or something because um, the stocking stuffing doesn't usually take very long. So then if people want to gather and have a drink after, um, we can make a night of it. I'll send out details for that in an email. Perfect. Thank you. And, uh, and December 4th is uh, Tuesday night, so that would be taking the place of a regular meeting. Kristen, I'm sure you're bristling with lots of community service stuff to talk about. So the first one is the Old Strathcona Business Association is doing the winter white light up event. So when they came to speak to our club, um, I think they briefly had mentioned it and then touched base with Scott about this event that they are running. So it's on December 1st from 4 until 6 p.m. And this is the sign up. So they are looking for a couple more positions. I think there's enough room for probably four to six people. A lot of the positions are filled, which is awesome. So I will send this out um, either tonight or tomorrow. And if you're available on December 1st and um, can go on behalf of our club, that's fantastic if you're able to support it. The other thing that we are um, planning um, or our Christmas dinner with the Neighbor Center is in the works. So we are looking for uh, volunteers on the 20th of December for the actual dinner at the Neighbor Center. But on December the 11th, which is a Tuesday when we don't have a meeting, we are going to be making baked goods using the Neighbor Center space and using their kitchen. So there, Marilyn did send out a sign up. I think Darren and I are the only people so far that are going to be baking. Um, so if you are available on the uh, 11th, we are baking after 7. There are going to be neighbors there, so we're going to have an opportunity to engage with some of our community members, and they'll help us out to make desserts. So we are making desserts um, instead of buying them as we have done the last couple of years. Did I miss anything? Good. Thank you. And de December 11th is also another one of our regular meeting times. So. Uh, plan to come out. It's a good opportunity if you've never been to a neighbor center uh, dinner club event. It's a good uh, chance to learn about it. Um, and it's the same spot that we had the barbecue. So they've got a pretty fancy kitchen, actually. Yeah. And we probably, we'll probably accept um, head on eating these two because we will have some cost for the supplies for baking. Um, so the neighbor center does have a kitchen that they can use as well. So I'm sure we can use donations to have. Sprinkles or molasses or special. Cool, thank you. And I'm getting, please. Steve. Steve is a former Rotarian from another club and he's looking for a new club. So he's found us and he, we don't know who he is yet. So we're going to introduce ourselves to you at some point, maybe after this meeting. So everyone, please welcome Steve. Hello, Steve. I'm Scott, by the way. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Um, okay. Uh, Kevin, did you have any announcements? Just so happy I get to be here. <laughs> okay. Sweet. Uh, uh, do we have anybody who's done the Great White Coffee Date Challenge that would like to talk about it? Oh, well, I guess I do have something to announce. Oh, okay. So. You know, not too long ago, uh, I had the distinct pleasure of sitting down for coffee with uh, the fantastic Kathy. Uh, so we both just uh, found a time that was convenient for both of us. We uh, we met uh, in the, I guess, in the middle location from both of our works, and we just uh, chatted. We chatted a bit about Rotary, but then we just went on everything. I mean, uh, I think we we touched everything from you know cinematic classics to um, uh, to what are yeah, to policies, to um, the current uh, political climate, and what it, you know, what's right and wrong, and you know, it was, it was. Uh, I mean, it, it was better than any uh, philosophy 101 class I've ever had, and it was just great to get to know Kathy even better. So. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> it was a lot of fun, and uh, I'm looking forward to my next one. In fact, looks like uh, Stan and I already have one uh, semi-planned for uh, this week. So looking forward. And just as a friendly reminder, and I'm sure Kathy can give you one, it, we have a handy-dandy uh, card that can fold and fit in your pocket. And that's right. Origami challenge accepted. So the purpose of this is just to encourage everybody to go out and meet on an individual basis outside of our group. Uh, Kathy and I are going to be uh, meeting with Darren afterwards, uh, get to know you. And uh, yeah, it's fun. And I've, I've been told there is a fantastic draw at the end of the year that Kathy will be spearheading. So I look forward to that. Uh, Tamara, did you have anything on the raffle side you'd like to mention? Sure, okay. Um, why don't we, okay, so we already talked about December 1st. So we're also, some people have asked to, about the vests. So the vests, ha, we've ordered 12 initially, so they'll be coming in uh, shortly. Should be available for the December 1st. Um, and if you didn't put your name in and we don't have enough, we can always order more. And the purpose of the vest is to go, be it's something else that's visible that can go over jackets and that too. Okay. Okay. Um, why don't we do the road, the rotary moment, and then I'm going to do the survey after that. Okay, I do have raffle tickets. The draw is December 18th. We have either uh, two two dollars each, and there's a two hundred fifty dollar Fromoso gift card. Two nights at the Marmot Lodge, Mount Robson Inn. I can't remember one of the two in Jasper. <laughs> Sorry, two nights in Jasper, and then two framed Euler prints. So the draw will be December 18th at our Christmas party, but they're two dollars each. So if you want to help sell them, that would be great. We're more than halfway there, uh, so we printed 500 tickets. So whoever sells the most tickets gets a $50 keg gift card, and Paige is well on her way. And the last time she did win, and she got to go on date night. So. <laughs> Compliments of me anyway <laughs> so uh, just before we show the video it's about two and a half minutes Rot uh, November is foundation month and our foundation funds many things Rotary is the largest scholarship provider in the world so not only do we provide peace fellowships and peace scholars but we have Rotary ambassador scholarships as well this young lady will talk in this video about her Rotary ambassador scholarship and what she's done with it and that the, all of these scholarships are for post-secondary degrees um, graduate degrees not undergrad degrees so if you're doing a master's degree the peace ones are often in peace and conflict resolution. Uh, the Global Grant Scholarship, Amy Smith is in, and, and you you guys probably know her. We sponsored part of her Global Grant Scholarship. She's in Australia studying policy development. The Global uh, uh, Ambassador Scholarships are Rotary are can, a wide range of topics, economic development, but it's, it focuses on Rotary's six areas of peace. Doctors, lawyers, peace scholars, uh, policy analysts, whatever you choose. So we are the largest provider in the world. And part of the money that we donate to the foundation goes to these scholarships. And it does impact many different things. It has been proven in the recent past that when you empower women and young girls, it changes the economic development and life of the people in certain communities. This video talks about how when you empower women and girls with employment and economic stability, how it changes not only their lives, but the lives in their communities. So the foundation does many great things, and I hope this video will offer some inspiration to help us donate towards the foundation and offer a better understanding of what we do. Thank you. And if you missed it, we had uh, Wayne Kaufman and Wayne McCutcheon here last uh, two weeks ago talking about foundation. My name is Hannah Warren. I'm the founder of Jule and a former Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar to India. Maheshwar is an ancient village on the edge of the Narmada River in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Weaving is a local tradition, and today there are over 4,000 weavers living there.
I first went to Maheshwar in order to pursue a photography project that would document female weavers wearing saris that they'd woven themselves. And I was really surprised when I got there to realize that these women couldn't even afford to own a single sari that they had woven themselves. They had this incredible talent and skill, and yet they couldn't actually afford to own a sari. That really inspired me to start a project that would empower these women to become financially independent and to rise above the middlemen who exploit them. So I decided to create Jule, which is a nonprofit social enterprise that concentrates on investing in women so that they can create a brighter future for themselves, their families, and their communities. Rotary really helped us to expand the scope of what we're doing. Now, just two years down the line, we're working with over 100 women. Ultimately, our goal is to work with over a thousand women because we believe that investing in women can create sustainable and measurable impacts in this community that will help to end child labor and ultimately alleviate the cycle of chronic poverty. Cool, thank you. I think one of our mandates um, is to just talk more about what's going on outside of our club and Rotary International, so I appreciate when, with Stan and Tamara, when they shall share these type of things. Great, okay, so what I'm gonna, before we bring, um, are there any other announcements that I missed? No, okay. Um, before we bring Paige up, what I'd like to do is, and maybe start a habit of doing this is when we have an event, uh, do a bit of a uh, debrief for about five minutes, um, and it's quite simple. And uh, these questions come, um, I'm a mentor at the UVA uh, with Venture Mentoring Service, and we went through some coaching training. Sure, thank you. And, um, and these are the three questions that, uh, that when we're doing a coaching session uh, with a, an entrepreneur that they want us to ask. And so I wanted to ask these questions with respects to Pool for Polio. This is our third annual, um, so that we can improve, um, so that we can always improve for the fourth annual and, and ongoing. And we could do this for every event that we do, because um, I'm sure everybody has some feedback, some observations. And uh, I would appreciate if you just take a moment, and if you need a pen, I've got a few extra ones. Um, if you take, if we could take a, a few minutes here and just answer three simple questions. What went well? What was tricky? What can we do better next year? And then, uh, thank you, Kate. And then at, uh, after we have a few minutes, if you can just um, bring a, a pass them back to me, that would be great. And you don't have to put your name on it. And even if you didn't go to the event um, and you have some feedback on um, promoting it and that type of thing, we're, pretty much any and all uh, feedback is welcome. And then if there's anything that anybody wants to share before we move on, that'd be great too. I just like to throw it. Uh, I know Tamara did a lot of the planning for it. It's just a nice. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I can say that. Now. I just wanted to say how great uh, Tamara did. Uh, organize. I know uh, Tamara took on the bulk of the work for organizing you, and it was a really fun event. So thank you so much, Tamara. Yes, thank you. They won on a scratch, but that's still yeah, a win. They had three balls left on the table, and the other team stands with the green team from scratch. 
Yeah. Well, we won for about three seconds. Yeah. I saw the black ball. So more backspin next time there, Stan. No backspin next time. No backspin. And I don't have to rethink it. I don't have the Yep. That's good. Okay. Oh, can you actually hear things going on? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to novel in that regard. Uh -oh. <laughs> did you get a feedback? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I had some insider information on that. I tried to get this. I tried to get this. Oh, I thought he was volunteering, volunteering your kid. No, no, no you're no, actually, you're willing to. I was trying to make more money for the foundation. Oh. You got it up to $100. There was special incentives. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's right. You're trying to make more money. Okay, is there anything in the feedback that anybody wants to share? I actually thought the sun and auction items were really great. Uh, I thought they were some fantastic. I mean, it was such a variety. So even if you like, if you have a sweet tooth, you had something. Uh, there's some, uh, you know, definitely some big ones. Uh, and even some, you know, uh, more experienced ones. So it's kind of a bit for everyone. So I really like that aspect. Well, uh, one thing that I did, I was at Marmot this weekend, and, and uh, I did up a, cert a thank you certificate, and a which should be provided a frame for. And uh, have you posted it? I posted it, yeah. Okay. Lots of, lots of remarks on it. Okay, yeah. So we posted it to Facebook. Um, so that's me with Rob Allen, who's been – he's – one of the managers that I've gotten to know over the number of years, and and uh, he was busy at the time. He said, "Well, just stick it on my desk." I'm like, "No." So I tracked him down at the end of the day. We we're in the vehicle maintenance bay, and, and he was like, "Oh, wow!" Uh, yeah, pleasantly surprised. And Marmot also owns the Jasper tram now, so I'm hoping next year we can do tram tickets. Um, but. Uh, and I know Tim's working on some fundraising things, so something to consider is also experiences. Because uh, I think people, as you get older, you're more interested in experiences than things. So uh, I know uh, Kathy has banded about some some ideas, and um, Tim could do a bike trip uh, on fat bikes perhaps. But, uh, yeah, just when we get to that point, just be, uh, I'd say, um, Imaginative, creative, because there's lots of things that I'm sure people want to do. Good. Um, if if uh, once you're done, just hand them back, and then I will hand it over to Paige. Thank you. There's all these really cool fun ideas that don't have to be at one event, but we can do 
Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> with the like with the treasure chest, we should already have next year's as theme potentially pirate, just so I can hear people say R every time. They say <laughs> like, we gotta be glorious every time they they, they say go pool. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Pool pirate. Thank you, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. I grabbed the pool for a year ago. So this is a, uh, I'm not going to read all of them, but this is the best uh, feedback that I, I see so far is uh, Stan loving the stash. Somebody wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> so are you raising money for Movember? Okay, so if you wanted to, to donate to Stan's Movember <laughs> stash, please feel free to do. Okay, so thank you very much for the feedback. We'll review it and uh, and uh, we'll improve uh, for next year. Okay, and now I'm going to turn it over to Paige, although I don't have a bio to read. For you. <laughs> so Paige, uh, for those of you who don't know, she is our vocational chair, and I know one of the things that we discussed was just actually going through and talking about what is vocational services. And so that's what you're going to be presenting about today. That's so, right. so thank you very much, Paige. <laughs> Can you smile and I get a picture before so I get a good picture? Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all hooked in. <laughs> thank you. Are we photo opt? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm vocational services chair this year. Um, it's a tiny little uh, committee of one <laughs> in our club. And uh, the main thing I focus on is the Rotary Employment Partnership. But a goal that I set this year was um, to kind of learn more about vocational services and what it really is. Um, it's something that we've often not defined in our club. Um, and it's often played kind of a quieter role. Um, so I had a lot of fun exploring what vocational services is, and I'm going to just share some of the nuggets with you today, and we can have a little bit of a conversation um, about what we think vocational services means in our club, or looks like in our club. I'm going to jump to this side of the light. And my notes are really small, so you'll just have to bear with me as I squint at them. Um, so I just have a little agenda for you so you know where we're going. Um, we're going to define vocational service according to Rotary, and then we're going to look at how that definition might fit within our unique club that's fun, fearless, and focused. And um, then I'm going to give some examples of vocational service in action because I think that's an easy way to get a sense of what it really means. So um, for those of you that are newer to Rotary, um, vocational service is, la is labeled or named as one of the avenues of service. So there's five avenues of service, and vocational service sits as one of them. Um, the clubs, if you were to go visit other clubs, they would have a chair um, who would host vocational service within their club. So when I started doing some digging on the internet about what vocational services is, I kept being directed to the object of Rotary, which is not something that I'd seen or heard um, probably since my induction uh, quite a while ago. Um, but it's a philosophical statement of Rotary's purpose and the responsibilities that we have as Rotarians in our communities. Um, so I'm just going to read it out to you. It's kind of an officious thing that Rotary likes. Um, so the object of Rotary is to encourage and foster the ideal of service as a basis of worthy enterprise, and in particular, to encourage and foster, first, the development of acquaintance as an opportunity for service, second, high ethical standards in business and professions, the recognition of the worthiness of all useful occupations, and the dignifying of each Rotarian's occupation as an opportunity to serve society. And then third, the application of the ideal of service in each Rotarian's personal, business, and community life. And fourth, the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace through a world fellowship of business and professional persons united in the ideal of service. So we definitely hear that fourth one quite a bit, the advancement of international understanding, goodwill, and peace. Um, and some of the others we maybe don't focus on as much. Um, 
but uh, we can really see vocational services um, coming through in the object of Rotary. Um, and in particular, it's cited in that second object of Rotary. So talking about um, our business and our professions, how we conduct ourselves in our workplaces, um, and then also how we take the skills that we have in our workplaces and use them in our Rotary clubs. So there's kind of this reciprocal relationship between workplaces and Rotary. So if we unpack that definition, um, we can see that there's three distinct parts to vocational service. So the first part is really around high ethical standards in business and professions. So um, us all holding each other accountable to practice in an ethical way um, in our different professions or our businesses, um, in the things that we do in our day-to-day -day life. Um, and Rotary talks about there being two kinds of codes um, that we use to help us uh, hold each other accountable. And the first is the four-way test, which we often talk about um, at our meetings, we cite at our meetings. Um, and then the second is a Rotarian code of conduct. A second component to vocational services is the recognition of the worthiness of all useful occupations. So um, taking some time to learn about each other and our occupations, um, understanding what they mean and what they do and what skills can be harvested from um, that kind of job or occupation uh, and how that can be brought into the club. And then dignifying of each Rotarian's occupation as an opportunity to serve society. So thinking about where the service is within our professions and our occupations. So for fun, I thought I'd go look at the code of conduct because that was something that was cited um, in that previous slide in the three kind of keys to vocational service. Um, and if we look at this code of conduct, we can strongly see um, the three key components of vocational service in it. Um, so it talks about using vocational talents to serve in Rotary. It talks about conducting business ethically. Um, it talks about promoting the recognition and respect for all occupations. Um, it talks about using vocational talents to provide opportunities for young people. Uh, to serve and for those that are marginalized. Um, and it talks about not seeking special privileges in business and professional relationships. So again, that kind of high ethical standard that we're being held to. So what can we take away from all of these definitions and formalities? Um, Rotary really likes to have these really formal kind of structures and sometimes I think we get lost in that and we forget to um, kind of interpret it and embody it in our clubs. Um, so what I really took from it um, and the readings that I was doing is that it's really a way of life is what vocational service is talking about. Um, and it's actually the core of Rotary and like the essence of Rotary and what sets Rotary apart from other service organizations. Um, and I think that's why it's difficult to articulate or to define. Um, and it, it really goes back to the beginnings of Rotary because it was these professionals that got together who were thinking about um, their diverse skill set and how they could bring that skill set to their community to make a difference. Um, and I think that's that's really neat for us to think about. Um, and then there is this kind of the key component of this like reciprocal relationship. So there's talk of um, as a Rotarian representing our vocation and our profession within our club. So being um, good examples or role models for our profession within our club, um, drawing on our professions to serve our club and to serve our community, um, but then also exemplifying um, the high ethical standards and ideals of Rotary when we're out at work and in our communities. So there's this back and forth and sharing that's happening, um, which is really neat. Um, Something, so something that I think about when I'm doing this, I probably can jump to it more quickly because um, I'm actually an occupational therapist by trade. Um, and in occupational therapy, we don't think about occupation as being specifically tied to a profession. It's not just about your productivity role. Occupation is actually um, like everything that you do in a day. Um, and so 
something that I think we've done well in our club um, is we haven't restrained ourselves to think about vocation um, as solely profession. Um, we have a lot of space in our club for people to be able to bring skills from all the kinds of roles and all the things that they do in community to come. Because I think it can be really restricting to and limiting and exclusionary to just think about vocation, um, vocational service as um, me being a professional, a high-ranked professional, bringing that into my Rotary Club. And instead, we've really kind of opened the box and thought, well, if I'm retired, I have these kind of professional skills that I can bring. Or if I'm currently unemployed, I still have these skills that I can bring um, and contribute to my community. Um, and I, I really love that about our club. And I think it's something that's cool and dynamic, um, which is awesome. And I think an example of this um, is the who's who's, I, that's what I thought of, because often a who's who is about someone's professional identity, but in our club, our who's who's have really become about who that person is as a person and their kind of community identity, um, which I think is really special, and I love that. We get to know each other kind of on a different level and not just think about our professions. Okay, so I thought that I would just open it up for a bit of a conversation here. Now that we have some nuggets in our brain about what vocational services means, I told you one of my favorite things about our club. Um, as to what you guys think, um, it means to live out high ethical, um, live out high ethical values as members in our club. Um, thinking about the dynamic, fun space that our club is. Do you want to talk amongst yourselves or throw them? You can throw them just out to me. We can just have a group conversation. I guess if you could think about, if you want me to break it down, like think about the, the ways you bring your, your skills from out there into the club. Maybe we can start with that. Are there, are there ways that you do that or things that you bring? I think for our club, we're really conscious of the projects that we choose to support. Mm -hmm. So not only what is that project at face value, but kind of what are the underpinnings of that organization, what do they value, what is the intention of this project, who is it serving. I think we're really conscious of the project that we choose to support. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I love that about us. We make sure that our projects align with our mm -hmm. club values and vice versa. And mm -hmm. And yeah, and in many ways I see it as a blending of both. Um, like I am blending rotary values and things that I've learned from my rotary community, but also my own personal values, um, and we're able to blend them together to have a certain standard that we hold ourselves to. Can you repeat the question? Why don't we start with ways that you feel like you bring skills from out there, so whether it be your profession or other volunteer roles or things that you do to the club. Um, an example for me would be that I'm talking about inclusion and diversity with the youth programs because that's something that I'm really passionate about, the skill set that I have, and I'm bringing that to the Rotary space. Are there other examples? I'm more of a marketing person, so that's why I'm doing the videos and cussing up the website and also bringing in some online media stuff. Yeah, I've seen, like from an outsider perspective, I've really seen how you brought your profession to the club this year, and we see it with all of the different styles of leadership, right, in, in the kinds of things you bring. Um, you have like a very good like business brain, and you've been very organized, and um, yeah, the videos and all of those pieces, I think that's been really neat that you brought that, for sure. Kate, what do you see in Rotaract as a professional developer and certification? <coughs> Um, I think it's different for us because it's we're still trying to find ourselves. <laughs> I think I don't know if you agree with that, but like we don't call it vocational service; we call it professional development. So we talk about like improving ourselves, and so we do have a, we have a position <coughs> like you have to take that's a professional development chair. So they bring presenters into our club and like set up conferences and that kind of thing. So I think it's like. It, we're, we're not as set in who we are, but it's still amazing to see people bring their different talents to the club, be it public speaking, their own personal values, um, their jobs that they do outside. Um, I think it still happens, but I don't think it's like as defined because we don't ask like um, 
we're not as focused on people's faculties and in road racks. Like it's not about like what you're taking. That's why it's so cool how diverse our club is. Yeah. I think that totally gets at the heart of what I'm getting at is that it's less about your profession and more about you. Like what do you as a person bring to the club? And I think that's at the heart of what vocational service is. We kind of call it vocation and we've linked it traditionally to um, occupation. But um, yeah, I think it's really neat to think about you as an individual and the essence that you bring to the club to make it the place that it is. Um, and we obviously have a lot of really cool people around the table because our club has a cool vibe and people tell us that all the time, right? When they come to visit, people are envious of us. Um, and so I think that's something to be proud of and to be validated and, and recognized. Um, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's space for it to be open. Mm-hmm. Totally. Like furthering that to to Mary's point is like how we also choose to address like problems or issues within the club. I think we draw on our our diversity, like coming to mind um, like a brief meeting that that Scott, Kathy, Kevin, Stan, and I had about somebody who was requesting for funds from our club. It didn't feel like it was a dictatorship or that there was one person that was making a decision. It was really an inclusive environment to say, what are the pros and cons of this? Like, what is your perspective? How can we most appropriately address it? Mm -hmm. I feel like we we handle problems really trying to to outsource like different opinions and perspectives of how are we holding ourselves to that standard and kind of our club. Like, how are we projecting ourselves? Mm -hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. Dealing with other business people, if I, if I know that they're material, then at least the trust value in them is that much more. Because there are people out there who are the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's nice to know about that. It's certainly helpful. Yeah, it is neat that we kind of have an understanding when I, I have the same feeling sense when I meet another person and I find out they're a Rotarian. You're just kind of like, oh, that's cool. Like, <laughs> we're part of the same community and I don't even know you, you know? Um, yeah. It's really neat. And that was really neat about exchange. Like you felt that so strongly and you were in like another country on another side of the world and you could meet someone that was a Rotarian and just have that same sense of community with them, which is really cool. And something special about Rotary in particular. What about the other way? So we talked a little bit about how you bring your gifts and talents to the club. Um, are there ways or examples that you bring Rotary to your workplace, um, even if they're subtle or implicit? Yeah, so what do you, what, do you, do you do it, or do you say it, or do you have it displayed, or? Uh, no, I, I say it a lot, and it's just the like, it's amazing, it's like working on planning an event, strategizing about different things, it's like you want to go with them, so they can meet all of those things. Cool, so that's something that you've really gotten from the Rotary community. Cool. Does anyone else have other examples or ideas of? Often I think for me, I don't do anything super deliberate, but just talking and telling people about Rotary and what it is and what it means and what it means to me and why I participate, um, I think says a lot about yeah, it says a lot about me, about my moral character, and about um, about Rotary. Uh, okay. So um, these are some ideas. So I got all of this information from something called an introduction to vocational service. It's on Google. It's put out by Rotary International. You can go read it if you feel like learning more. Um, 
they cite these as ideas for vocational service in action um, because they also talk about how clubs have a hard time articulating what it is and knowing when what they're doing is vocational service or not. Um, and so what I really discovered as I was going through it is that we're actually doing a lot of vocational service. Um, we just don't necessarily name it that or, or talk about it, but it's, it's happening right under our noses. Um, so these are some ideas that they had. Uh, talk about your vocation within your club. So be intentional about sharing what it is you do, what that means, what that looks like, um, so that we can all learn from each other. Um, using your professional skills to serve a community of people. So sometimes that might be using your like direct professional skill set. Sometimes I think it might be using the soft skills that you learn um, to be able to serve the community. Practicing your profession with integrity and inspiring others to behave ethically through your own words and actions. So leading by example, that's something that we all do all the time. Uh, help a young person achieve his or her career aspirations. Um, I think that's something that we do um, uh, in our relationship with Rotaract and Interact. We have a very open invitation for them to attend our meetings, which is cool. Some of our members have participated in the mentorship program, um, which is another opportunity to do just this. Um, and then guide and encourage others in their professional development. And I've definitely seen that happen within our club too. We have members who are seeking jobs. Um, we've had lots of connections happen through the network of Rotary, which is really special. Um, and just being able to share uh, tips and tricks and different things like that um, is really awesome. Uh, so I was brainstorming some different projects that we already do that fit in vocational service. So the Rotary Employment Partnership is one that we name as being in vocational service. Um, but also supporting things like that Rotaract mix and match event that happens at the district level, really supporting any youth events, um, to be honest, is, um, is related. Um, in the past, our scholarships for youth at risk um, fit within a vocational services mandate. Uh, the White Knight Award, because we're recognizing the high ethical standards um, that people practice by. Um, so that's a really neat way that we are incorporating a vocational service mindset. Um, and I already said that, yeah, it's ha happening under our noses and we didn't even know it. And then these are just some other service ideas that uh, were online that I thought I'd put out there. Um, they might be things for us to bop around in our head for the future. Um, hosting a classification talk to learn the inner workings of other Rotarians' jobs. So maybe it would be cool um, to do like a follow-up to people's who's who's where you get to really do like a showcase of a specific, um, maybe it's their profession, maybe it's something else that they're involved in. So maybe I thought about like Kristen's Yinta project, for example, or, um, something like that to really learn about something that someone's involved with. Uh, tour members workplaces or host a meeting there. We've kind of done that. We met at Scott's for an executive meeting. Um, and it's just a neat opportunity to be able to show off your workplace and to show people what you do um, and do a bit of a field trip. Uh, join a Rotary Fellowship. So these are international associations of Rotarians, Rotarian spouses, and Rotaractors who share a recreational or vocational interest. And there's a whole schwack of them. Um, if you're interested, you could go look at that. And so you're able to really connect with people in other um, places over a common goal or interest. And then give ethics awards to businesses or professionals who demonstrate high ethical standards. So we've... Um, We've talked a little bit about that before and it would be kind of neat to do like a public version of the White Knight Award. Um, so if we were in on some of um, what was happening in the different businesses in Old Strathcona to be able to say, we really recognize that this is something that you're doing. We really value and appreciate that. Um, keep it up kind of thing. It might be a neat little token that we could do and a way for us to relate and connect to the businesses and learn about them. Um, and another idea they had was sponsoring an essay or speech contest for young people. Um, so they were talking about engaging youth with concepts of integrity and ethics um, by asking them something like, what does the four-way test mean to you? I thought about our interactors, because um, I thought, uh, particularly Old Scona, they probably have lots to say about that. Um, and it could be a neat thing, and then, I don't know, there could be some prize or something that went uh, with it, but a neat way to engage them. And then that's, that's all I got. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, Paige. You're welcome. I know. I know. But I really appreciate that we're doing this. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, just a, a th um, few things before uh, we t uh, close things up is just a thought in terms of the award. Um, and maybe throw this out to everybody. Now that we're developing a closer relationship with the Old Strathcona Business Association, um, if they're um, coming up with an award, talking to Shri, if there's any company or com uh, retail shops that go above and beyond on supporting an event that just don't get any recognition, that we could sponsor an award for that. Now, um, some, something to consider too, though, is that. The Sunrise Club also has an award that they do each year to highlight a specific leader, uh, non-Rotarian um, in the community. So that's something that we could also, if there's somebody we could recognize, that would be another avenue. Because they do want clubs to uh, nominate, nominate somebody. So that's something that we can keep an eye on. Um, right. The integrity award, so thank you. It could be someone that works with the UA or Tacoma or in the nursing profession or in government or in businesses. The integrity awards are for non retirees who are making a difference or showing service to yourself. Exactly. Good. So it's just something to keep in the back of um, your mind because we do get asked every year if there's somebody we want to nominate. We just haven't had somebody in mind. So it, maybe there is somebody that we should be putting forth. Um, also, I wanted to point out that January is actually vocation month, and we've got four weeks of meetings that we uh, are planning. And, and uh, I know, did you want to talk about one thing you're working with Lynn on? Sure. Uh, so one of the weeks we're hoping to do a field trip for the Rotary Employment Partnership. So we're going to visit a workplace, hopefully one in Old Strathcona, um, that has hired through the partnership. We're going to get to tour their building, get to know them, um, and learn about the partnership and the experience that they've had hiring someone with an intellectual disability. Yep, uh, so that's one thing. Also, Darren, as uh, our newest member, um, can uh, I'm hope, I haven't told you this yet, but I'm hoping... <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that you can do your who's who uh, in January. And then also, Tamara mentioned that she's never done one, so the two of you can do your who's who. Um, and so that's our, as you said, that's our version of the classification talk. And then the other two weeks, uh, here is what I was going to propose. At the leadership training that we just did a few weeks ago, one of the sessions was a leadership style questionnaire. And the, and the reason... For that is you do a questionnaire, find out roughly what your leadership style is, and then, and the purpose of it is we work in committees, and we each have a, they had four different types of personalities, and we each like to be talked to differently. So it's just interesting a way to find out uh, self discovery of what it, type of uh, person you are, some of the characteristics, and how to work better as community members. So that would be one session that hopefully Kathy can help me with, um, and then also Kathy uh, proposed. Uh, doing a session on Toastmasters and how to do better presentations. I did. You did? Right. I did not mean to pause. I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a hesitation there. No, it's a, yeah. 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 Anyone's interested in that? It can be outside of the meeting or part of the meeting. Or well, I was going to say it should. It could be the meeting. Well, because Rotary is going to be an official partner yeah. of Toastmasters. Rotary is taking over Toastmasters. What? Oh, really? really? Interesting. But it is becoming that. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So with respect to the Toastmaster, just at this point, we were more banding around some ideas on how to, to make do a better presentation. Um, Kathy, is there any thoughts on that or things that you would like to include? Not to sorry to put you on the spot, but any coffee, no happy ones ever. What? The, when I mentioned it to Scott, we were sitting at the leadership assembly, and I realized that there are fantastic speakers, fantastic ideas, 
wonderful messages that people have. Sometimes presentation is lacking a little and you do tend to, your interest wanes a little bit. And I thought, is that something that our club members would like to learn a couple of little things that we do in Toastmasters or that other people have learned, sharing ideas, things that are effective, maybe things that people actually don't respond to anymore. There are, it's open for debate, that discussion. Presentations are very powerful if you do them well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, ouch! You know, it's it, just as a point of uh, just as a point of humor. I was reading my my um, horoscope today, and it said you're going to be in a meeting where two people go after each other, and you're best to stay out of it. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna leave you two to start it out. So there you go. So that's what we what we have lined up for January. Uh, I'm officially taking over for program services, so I would love your help if you have any suggestions moving forward because we do have the rest of the year to uh, complete. December is, is purposely a light month because uh, we have done a lot, and then we will get back at it in January. But January, as you can tell, is already filling up, and then we've got an interesting presentation from... Uh, Mina Duncan uh, in uh, February. But again, if you have any suggestions, I'm all ears. And on that note, I'm going to turn it over to Tamara. Okay, as a thank you to our speakers, we donate an amount to the Rotary Foundation. So Paige, if you would like to come up, we'd like to present you with your certificate of appreciation for your work on your presentation and all you do. And we'll be making a donation to the foundation in your name for your presentation today. Pivots. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. Yes, thank you. So, when it comes to speaker gifts and uh, club members, uh, my feeling is uh, obviously we want to support the foundation, but if you're going to go above and beyond and step up and do a presentation, I think you should be rewarded and recognized. So, that's why we are doing that. No, yep. That's magic. Yes, that's mandatory. Okay. So in terms of, of some upcoming speakers and events, uh, we have uh, round, a weekend, too, of guess who's coming uh, this Saturday. Uh, <laughs> it's a new thing. <laughs> yes. Yes, cookie backing is a new thing. I also back cookies. That's right. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah. It's, that, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so, all right, so next Tuesday we're going to be discussing our casino application um, so that we can get that in. Uh, December 4th, uh, you've already heard, but we're doing the Skill Society stocking stuffing. Uh, December 11th, cookie baking. Um, and how many people, again, do you need for that? Another two or three, okay. Uh, and then Syed and the fellowship committee is going to be organizing a Christmas party, most likely is going to be here. Uh, and also on the 20th, we have the Neighbor Center Christmas dinner, uh, which uh, Marilyn wanted to mention. Um, and I think you mentioned already? Perfect. And then, of course, the 25th, I believe, is our is Christmas, and but we're not meeting on Christmas Day. Uh, sorry, no. Well, uh, it would be the 8th. Yeah, because uh, the Tuesday is January 1st, and uh, so it would be the 8th. We do have a couple of weeks of Christmas break, yeah. All right, any final thoughts, questions before we do the four-way test? S Steve's comment? Steve, welcome to our club. Do you have anything you'd like to say? I'm putting you on the spot. Come on, you should have said that. I'm going to go on the first time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good. Which club did you come to? I'm, I was a Rotarian in Windsor, Ontario. Oh, okay. I was a uh, Windsor St. Clair Rotary Club for three 
Yeah, any of you know Elizabeth Marking? Yes. Yes. She's yes. a member of uh, you, you the Yeah, so it's like, well, yeah, she's from the Windsor area. We're friends. And she's been oh. me to oh. check you guys up. <laughs> no, sweet. <laughs> we'll, we'll thank her for that. Yeah. Great. Hey, well, thanks for coming. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Um, now let's finish off with the four-way test of all the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to call concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you, everyone. And uh, we will see you next week. Have a good week.